I said, uh, bring it up. I said, uh, bring it up. The vibration. Bring it up. I said, uh, bring it up. I said, uh, bring it up. The vibration. Bring it up. All right. What is going on? It is Adam, A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. If you've never been here before, remember to go over to the website and check out the full bibliography for the entire show. Remember, there is a source for every single article, tweet, video, picture, document that we're going to have on here. So if you have questions or think, hey, that's uh, that's fake this, fake that, make sure to go check our website first. Uh, We do have sources on everything that we show you. Uh, We're going to have basically all of the current events that have happened over the last 24 hours and... Uh, anything that has happened today. Plus, we will be updating live. You will get uh, updated live news if anything is to pop off during this show. If you're watching the replay, remember you can always go check out all of the wonderful mods over at marfuglenews.com slash friends. So first of all, U.S. parades, nuke bombers, and vows jets are, quote, ready to strike anywhere, anytime. This is kind of like a, this, well, this is straight up like gorillas beating their chest. It, it's a It's a taunt. It's a uh, you know, we're the most powerful mofos in in on the yard, and uh, our milkshake is going to bring you to your knees or something like that. I think I used that right. Uh, but either way, these things don't just destroy city blocks. They destroy cities. Uh, they, And some say that they're secretive stuff that could destroy states, right, or provinces or wherever they're uh, hitting. Uh, the B-2s are very stealth. They are a weapon that can get pretty much anywhere uh, and get through any kind of defensive system by the way that they're designed, the way that the radar shows them. So these things are pretty scary. Uh, Most people don't care if this kind of thing happens, and you have to look at it from another point of view. It's like, if you were a country, and even if you put them out here, do any of the other countries really think we would use these right now, especially after the last four years of like, eh, well, we'll do sanctions instead of doing anything. I think that if we had a different, uh, any other prez, not just the last one, but any of, of of the other ones, in my personal opinion, I think that they it probably would have some more uh, depth to it. Uh, but with our current state of military and our current state of administration, in my own opinion, I don't think this really does much. Uh, just as when we used to send carriers to a certain area, like China, in 1993 when Bill Clinton was president, uh, they China was basically threatening Taiwan. Back then, China was not what they were today. Uh, U.S. sent a, a group, a small group of carriers, I think it was three carriers, and it turned things around. China backed off, and that was the last we heard about it. They didn't need to do sanctions. They didn't need to do this, that, whatever else. They brought in, they showed a, a, a force of might, and China essentially backed off. The, the last time they just did this with China, they did not. So as far as these things go, this is also, it could be part of a greater gando or psychological thing, not only for our adversaries, but for us. It's like it it makes us feel all super powerful. Uh, But these things are incredibly, incredibly scary. Uh, This is the end bringers. These things could literally be part of the system that would bring our planet to a melting pot. Uh, But again, Again, my opinion is we're not going to see that. We're going to see everything taken in one piece. Uh, Hopefully, it's us doing the taking. So if you, again, have uh, any information on B-2s or if you've worked with them or flown them, we actually had, uh, last time we talked about B-2s, we had somebody that used to pilot them. So if you have that kind of insider knowledge, then leave us a message at 2244 marf We're going to get into this and all of the other uh, strange exercises and drills that are going on right now uh, today on Marfugal TV. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in this show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest 
download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. All right, and Jam556, hopefully that's good. If you guys can let me know good on the volume. Uh, I guess I was a little bit low, so thank you so much for correcting that. Uh, let's see here. Lady L, let's do a quick roll call, and then we'll go back over to the map. Uh, Stephanie Munoz, Carolyn Moore-Smith. Uh, we have, of course, Jalisa H. We've got some new names. Uh, welcome, James Floyd, just subscribed a second ago. Uh, Wasp91360, thank you so much for subscribing as well. Uh, as always, if you subscribe during the show, I always try to give you a shout out. Thank you, and we appreciate you being here. Uh, Kevin Mooring, Shells Spells, says, hi, Adam. Hey, nice to see you. Tracy Q, nice to see you as well. I just sent, uh, by the way, I, I spent a few hours trying to respond to people on X. So if you have uh, DM'd me on X, make sure to check uh, your inbox. Uh, I, obviously, if you send me something like, hey, this is happening on Tuesday the 3rd, and I get back to you a week later, I apologize, but again, that's why uh, I, I do encourage you to keep sending. If you have crazy stories or something like that, send it to my uh, DM on X. And then uh, Jennifer Watson, Crazy Coyote, Kathleen Wood, Jay Ellisey, uh, Lady L, FEMA Region 9, what's happening? We have Janice Wolf, uh, Northern Girl Hobbies, Jay Pass from Grass Valley, California. We have Cat in a Hat, Ragdolls are the most amazing gentle cats. I don't, what, what ones are Ragdolls? Now I'm trying to think. Uh, and then let's see here, Nick, we have uh, Alan G, Dragonfire, Con Conoco Perfection, Washington, Pacific Northwest all the way. Hey, nice local. And uh, Kenneth Grows and, and uh, Old School Fugle Fam, thank you. Angelo Perfelli, Hubo Diggs, Mr. Hubo Diggs, thank you. Another one, you've been making it almost every show, thank you. Stephen Crump, uh, AF, uh, AVF, thank you. Uh, Char D and uh, Katie Golden Sapphire, thank you. R White Roses, D. Cash Butler, Badger, Blowtorch Barbie, Mrs. R, Gina Brown, and Briar Patch. Thank you guys. Let's bring in my co slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle Fam. I'm doing just fine. So we've talked about everything speeding up. I've said for years uh, they are they're basically cutting out all the deadlines now the pentagon is speeding something up dex what are they speeding up now apparently uh, it's the first uh, build of a new nuclear warhead in over 40 years so this has come out they are building a new one and they're even building it it says without doing nuclear testing so the w90 warhead will be used on a submarine launch ballistic missile system and is being built with a 19.8 billion dollar request by the national nuclear security agency uh in fiscal 2025 i don't think it'll be ready though until around 2030s time period so it's not like it, one thing it's like oh so they're going to put it out without even testing but i'm sure when it comes closer it probably will be as far as the other uh other things that they've been doing is they've been revamping their old stockpiles as far as my opinion goes this is mostly because they are puffing their chest out and they're i don't think we'll actually use them unless it's some sort of tactical or if it's a single one kind of like a, a japan situation uh, but th th nobody wants to go to nuclear war and even though i don't think they care about the other countries involved it is literally like uh, signing your own warrant, right? It's you're you're done. Uh, you also ruin the area that you hit for hundred years. So what is the point? I think that they are going to do things with drones. I think they're going to do things with cyber. They can do more damage by knocking out communications, power, internet, all of that, then go in or have people already on the inside and have people paid and on their team. Uh, that's that's how I think a modern day invasion would go if it was here. As far as other countries, uh, I think they would use um, really, really, really powerful, uh, you know, explosives that were non-nuclear. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And then China sounds alarm after Philippines and U.S. announce mega drills involving 16,000 soldiers. 
So another, yet another huge, huge drill, and the Philippines and the U.S. will conduct their first ever military exercises outside Southeast Asian countries' territorial waters in the South China Sea, sparking condemnation uh, from China. So China is really pissed off about this. Uh, but at first, when I saw this, I thought it was 160,000. Uh, 16,000 is is a, a large drill. It's not like what NATO has going right now. Uh, in uh, Europe, but it is a big drill, especially considering it's just the U.S. and the Philippines. Uh, the Philippines has been going head to head with China for a while, and I shared my theory the other day. I think that Philippines could be one of the smaller events that ends up sparking off uh, a bigger event, and I think that it would be timed where all of these things would go off at the same time. China and Taiwan, China, Philippines, uh, of course, uh, Japan, alongside with no the North Korea, South Korea uh, event, uh, you would have Venezuela and Guyana, you would have Russia and Ukraine, you would have all of this stuff go down all at the same time, and some wild cards thrown in. Uh, but it says it will be the first time the mega drills, I like how they call it mega drills, are carried out beyond Philippine territorial waters. So what they're saying is they're going outside of their actual legit space that should be theirs, which again, even if they're in their own waters, China is now claiming a huge chunk of that. Uh, even if they're on their own water, China is there. Now they're actually going to be going outside that, past the Spratleys in that area. In fact, if we go over to the map, you will see uh, this is the Philippines. And if, if you can imagine, about an inch out from here, uh, a box that goes up and then down all the way down to here, that is what they're supposed to have because they legitly have a claim to this part of the ocean. Now, Vietnam has a huge chunk as well. Vietnam goes all the way out to here to basically uh, to where the, it says South China Sea here, all the way down. Uh, but China is also claiming that. China, if you see this dark area, China is claiming all of this, including all the way up to Taiwan. All of this is being claimed by China, even though there are other countries that have legitimate claims and this is their water. So they are not only going in this area right here, they are going to be going past this. Uh, some even said that uh, military members said that they might even get close to Hainan. So if you have American and Philippine Navy and different drills going on right here, obviously it could end up with something crazy happening. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it also shows you that they may be preparing. Uh, they prepare for the most likely scenario, or at least that's what they're being told. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. Uh, before we move on, make sure to go check out EMP Shield if you haven't already. This helps support us. We're independent, and it helps protect you against what we think is the most probable scenario, an EMP strike or a CME. The CME is not, you know, that's not an adversary, but that is something we are looking at because we are in Solar Cycle 25. This device would ground the signal from either multiple EMP strikes or a Carrington level event from the sun in less than 500 trillionths of a second before it's able to fry your device, your car, your truck, motorcycle, boat, generator, uh, even your home. So this this is really good. Again, if you've uh, purchased a, an expensive generator, then you definitely want to protect it and keep it running. Uh, if you've gotten yourself a Flex 1500 or a Flex Tactical, it's an investment. You definitely want to protect it because what is the point if an EMP knocks it out and you're basically out of power anyways? Uh, the home version is really cool because once you protect your home, Yes, the power may not come back on for two years, but your generator will, and you can then power all of your devices, which are not fried because you wired in an EMP shield. Your car will be able to drive home to bug in or drive out to bug out. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Make sure to use the code MARF. Anybody can do this. Uh, the 84-year-old Fugle family member put this in themselves. Uh, she said it was incredibly easy. She watched a YouTube video and it took her about 15 minutes. So make sure to go check it out. It's uh, red to red on your battery, black to black on your battery, green to ground on a part of your frame, and then uh, bolted into the side of a part of an open spot. Very, very easy. All right, and then let's go in, in, over to Israel. Uh, strike was smaller than expected, and so was Iran's reaction. Remember, yesterday we were covering this at the exact time this was happening. So... It, it, when you cover things right on the dot, it's it's hard to know which way it will go. As I first reported, 
Uh, I was in a spaces yesterday. I was in a, a spaces and there were other people talking about what was going on with Israel and Iran. A gentleman that was from, uh, what was it, uh, Iran said there's actual explosions going off and he heard that something went down with the nuclear facility. But then it changed over the next few minutes. They said it wasn't, then it was. Then it, they said that a place in Syria and Iraq and in Iran, that three locations got hit. Then it obviously changed. The weird thing about all of the reporting is that nobody was verifying who was actually doing it. Uh, it I, Israel said, you know, never said yesterday at the time, they were like, you know, the IDF didn't take responsibility for it. So it was third parties t- t- telling us about it. Uh, Dex, as far as... Uh, the strike, Summer, we're going to cover a story here in a minute that even calls it lame. So people think, oh, uh, now people are thinking, I ran one, it's over, it's all good, back to nothing, right? Uh, Dex, it's it's really weird how this it, ended up getting covered. Yeah, it certainly seems weird. I mean, look, there was basically three locations hit um, and not hit very big, just in, you know, three different areas that were that were hit at that one time and you know it doesn't you know everybody's sort of like well that's it that's all you got like they launched hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stuff at you and you you just push back now everybody was also saying hey they're gonna wait until you know after the holiday uh but then this happened all of a sudden after so maybe that was a cover to give a little bit of surprise for last night but even last night it really wasn't that big of a strike and, and and Butterfly said, this is just the beginning. That's what I, t- by the way, over the next two weeks, if, if nothing does happen, and I could totally foresee this happening, where it's totally calm for a couple weeks, people will think, oh, it's over with. This is how it always works. Every, every time we expect something to happen, it doesn't happen. Every time things like this happen, it's unexpected or it doesn't line up with the time you think it does. It's almost, Dex, is there something called, isn't there like a, um, an improbability law or something like it's not Murphy's law, but it's where it's randomized. It's, Oh, it's never the time you think it is or It's never the event you think it is. It's, it's always, it's like almost, it feels like a physical law because it, it, every single time that they put out a date or a time or a time period, uh, for instance, like the 48 hours imminent event in Russia ended up two weeks later. But it ended up happening and exactly how they said it was going to happen, right? Um, chaos yeah, theory. Yeah, exactly. It's like it never happens when they think. And, Dex, do you think that it's like people are going to be totally calm from this? People are going to go, oh, it was nothing. It was nothing the whole time. Watch. It's, it's going to be something else. What do you think? Well, you know, if they, here's the thing. If, let's say, um, Israel decides to do something bigger later, maybe they wait a whole two or three weeks and but then when they do it do they lose the effect that they would have had like all of a sudden is everybody go why are you doing that as opposed to just yesterday everybody's like we know why you're doing it they just went after you but you know two or three weeks from now everybody's going to forget that it's going to be in the back of their you know it's going to not even be in the back of their mind it's going to be pretty far gone so i wonder if they lose that uh, recency of retaliation yeah, and, and then will will people even care at that point? It, it's it's so crazy how fast we move on, uh, how fast the news cycle. The news cycle, if you remember, I, I remember when they used to co- cover the same stuff 24-7, and they m- might even keep it going for weeks and weeks and weeks. Now, it's there's so many different things that they're covering, especially since the Internet, because there's so much more stuff to draw from. It's like they realize that people's attention spans are so small that they have to just grab stuff from everywhere at all times. But people forget about the big stuff like this. Uh, Dex. Well, you know, the other thing that could happen is we could actually see normalization. We saw that with China, how they normalized uh, flying close or crossing the meridian line into Taiwan. What if Israel normalizes these little strikes? Hey, we'll do one here. We'll do another one there. We'll do another one here. And it becomes normalized so that people get desensitized to it so then they can carry on a conflict without it being a big deal. Yeah, and uh, as far as, but the, the big deal is if they end up hitting those nuclear facilities, which the media totally screwed the pooch yesterday. There were so many 
uh, wrong reports out. And uh, again, I'm glad that that some of the news is getting flack for that because everything was reported wrong yesterday. Every MSM absolutely should be coming out with an apology today because everybody jumped the gun. We made sure to report all of it was alleged, but there were so many big mainstream medias that said this is what happened. And then later, either put a written correction or something else out later. So if if we're following um, this, that, that's why it's usually better to wait. That's, it, that's why it's usually great. By the time our show comes on, we have the last 24 hours and it's settled. Uh, but when it's breaking news, you never know. And then Netanyahu's government splinters the security minister calls attack on Iran. <laughs> lame. Literally called it uh, lame. Uh, this is, yeah, do you think this is the end of it? I don't think so. And people are already saying Iran won. This is a holy war. This is, this is, this is way beyond anything we could imagine. This isn't going to sleep. And I think that it's purposely going to screw people over. People are going to not realize. People are going to completely just push it off and worry about everything in the current. And then this is going to sneak up on everybody. Um, Dex, why did he call it lame? Well, when you look at the amount of missiles and drones that were launched, um, you know, from Iran versus just these two or three small strikes that happened, and we'll even question how one of them was done a little later. Um, yeah, it, it, you've got to you sort of look at it and go, that doesn't seem like it's, you know, like kind. Like, we're, we're going to do to you what you did to us. Now, just because theirs didn't get through, um, you know, like, should they have sent 100 over there? Or maybe at least 10 or 15 or 20, but three. Yeah, and it was th- three compared to 360, right? And uh, the the videos that came out of this massive strike, even if they're even if they uh, allegedly said 99 percent were hit out of the sky, some said 86 percent were. So I mean, it varies. It, that's a huge difference uh, of a hundred for uh, what is that? 84 percent or 86 percent? 84 percent. That would be 16 percent hit or 14% between that range, right? Even if, say lower end, 14% hit out of 100, that would be 14 strikes. Out of 300, that would be 28 if it's six, then you've got uh, a few. So you're talking about close to 70 strikes that would have hit in Israel with these three that they responded with. Is this a tit for tat or a tit for T? I, you see what I did there? Tit for T? Or I think it would be tit for tat. I don't know, but it's getting absolutely crazy. And that's why preppers are literally uh, saying, like, this is not this is not the end. Uh, everybody expects this to be bigger than than w- what they're saying. Dex, go ahead. Hey, the um, mess, the note you had given me, there is an update on the next map. So just make sure you refresh it when we get there. And there's two articles instead of one. Oh, perfect. So. Okay, so let's load this up here. Oh, and then, by the way, so this is why also we think that it's not, there might actually be a a semblance of peace because you have Passover starting. So that is one thing, and it it very well, we could have a couple strikes here right before the the couple days before, but once Passover starts, Dex, you you looked up what the dates were, right? It was it's almost a it's a month or how long is it? No, no, it's it's to the end of the month. It's the it starts Monday, the 22nd, and it goes until the 30th. Okay, so it's actually not that long. It's, it's but it is about 10 days. It's over a week. And it, it, during Passover, just as we saw Ramadan, the very end of Ramadan, we said this right before Ramadan, that they said that they probably wouldn't strike because many of the religious leaders absolutely said it was not okay to have the violence during this traditional um, ancient holiday. F- same thing with Passover. Many of the leaders say that it is not okay to be in a conflict or to start things during that period. So during Passover, that may end up happening as well. So hold on. And then, um, so let's go over to this. And let me, hold on one second. Let me get the new one added here. All right, and then Dex, you go over the first one, and I'll go over the second one. 
Okay, so they're suggesting, or some are suggesting, that even the strike that happened inside of Iran may have been done by the Mossad uh, inside the country. So some are suggesting that that could have been carried out um, by the spies by way of sending more than just a message of revenge, as they say in, in the headline here. But um, the, an analyst from a former British Army General, uh, Rupert Jones, said that that could have been carried out by the agency from inside, from within. And that's what they were, uh, and, and doing so would have been more than just sending a missile in, but sort of saying, ha ha, look, we're, we're even inside your border. So we don't know. I mean, this is speculation at this point, um, but we have to assume that it wasn't just about sending a message. Uh, we can attack you in your own country is what he was telling um, the author about this when he was being interviewed. So interesting concept, an interesting theory. Um, you know, a lot of people are still wondering, like, what happened with that explosion? Did it just happen? Did a drone come in? Did a missile come in? You know, there really wasn't a lot of other references to it other than there was the big explosion at that military site. And as far as the theories that are going out there, everybody's going to speculate. But at this point, it, it really is a, a waiting game to see what ends up more coming out. And then, of course, we had Iran allied militia claims airstrike hit a base in Iraq. Uh, so we do have um, some breaking. And then, by the way, in chat, folks were talking about this as well. Uh, who, Dex, do you remember? Yeah, I told this is you, today. So sweat, I think Swetnam has said it and a handful of others have said it in chat. Is that what Swetnam um, just emailed you? Because uh, I, Yeah, I I'm saw, pretty sure that's what he emailed me. I saw a different look, name say it first, and that's when I, I texted you. Oh, wait, I text, I put it in the text. Hold on. I do want to give credit where credit is due because we found this um, because of Swetnam and... Uh, okay, never mind. I said someone. <laughs> someone said Iraq was attacked. Uh, but, yeah, so one person uh, and several others were wounded in an explosion at a military base in Iraq on Friday night. It was reported to have been caused by an airstrike. The command post in Kalso, about 50 kilometers, 30 miles south of Baghdad, is held by Iraq's Popular Mobilization Forces, or the PMF, a state ag uh, security agency that has targeted U.S. forces and composed of dozens of armed groups, many of them close to Iran. Reuters reported that the security sources said that the huge explosion, which took the life of a PMF fighter, resulted from an air attack. An official in Iraqi's uh, interior ministry said that the attack had killed one person and wounded eight others, while the military souls told the AFP that the three Iraqi military personnel had been hurt. It's not known who's responsible, uh, which re reportedly hit the equipment, weapons, and vehicles. The U.S. military uh, denied that American forces were involved. Why are we even having to say that we're not involved? It says the United States has not conducted airstrikes in Iraq today, U.S. Central Command posted on X, adding that reports that American forces had carried it out are not true. So obviously, right away, people are saying the U.S. is this could even be a fantastic Freddy by themselves. And then they could say, oh, we you know, we saw U.S. do it or it could be is and somebody's just pulling that out or it could be true. <laughs> That's the thing. We don't know what to believe at this point. And when you cover stuff this fresh. We don't know what's actually going to come out about this, but this is still small. It pales in comparison to what happened to uh, Israel. So I guess we will we will see. Uh, Stephen Click says Isaiah fifty nine fourteen through fifteen. Read it. Okay, I don't know that one off the top of my head. I will have to. And then Teresa Young, uh, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate that. And then uh, thank you, Sweatnam Ministries uh, sent Dex email of break news. Thank you and um, appreciate the support. And then Larry Gatlins, uh, NJM, Be Real Beast, Richard Koschmeider, Jan, uh, Janie Bolin, thank you as well, uh, Jared West, and of course we have uh, uh, Uncommon News, 777, Tagger 916, and Wages World. Uh, I don't know if Wages, if you're in the audience right now, but uh, Wages just put out another video covering an, yet another storm. If you want uh, to know... <laughs> What, why we're saying that the the sun is going crazy, go over to Wages' channel. You can actually find them over on marfuglenews.com slash friends, 
and then go down and click on him. He's covered all of the crazy events that are going on, but it's like one flare after another, after another, after another. Solar Cycle 25 was predicted to be bad, and it is exactly what was predicted. And then police in Paris detain a man at Iran's consulate after reports he was armed, but they found no weapons. So what happened with this, Dex? Why, why the confusion? Well, I mean, he was originally reported as ha running around with a um, grenade and a, one of those kind of uh, vests that have things on them that go boom. And that's what everybody got concerned about. And he was right, right there at the consulate in Paris, the Iranian consulate. So that caused a huge hubbub. Of course, everybody had to, you know, go into reaction mode and deal with it. And of course, then he was arrested and it turns out he didn't have anything on him. Um, it just he had the, gave away the appearance or gave the impression that he did. Or is it a cover-up and they're trying to uh, reduce the risk of war? Uh, or was it a crank call uh, and the guy was actually just a nutball? Like, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Or was it exactly what they found? Why would they say that he had... Uh, that's pretty specific. Unless he had fake stuff, like a, a you know, a BB weapon or something and uh say a bb grenade or something like that dex go ahead <laughs> he said so they also say the suspect had been previously um convicted uh for setting fire at the embassy gates last year so he's a repeat offender there okay uh yeah so he's a regular um nita lane thank you for your support sweating him uh, do you have a source and is that what you just emailed? So Dex, I don't know if you want to check that again, but no, I already checked what I, what we've covered is what he emailed. Okay. So is there a confirmed Russian submarine submarine off of the coast of Florida? I don't have anything on that. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll look on that Swetnam. Um, uh, I, I briefly looked real quick. I could not see anything on it. Um, I would assume by the way, I, I assume that they're off of the West Coast, too. I, I would assume that they're popping up off of Seattle every once in a while. Uh, the scary part is, is they've done it before. Uh, I covered m many years ago, it's probably f half a decade ago, um, that they were actually, they popped up in the Puget Sound. They took a photo op. They were able to get through all of our detections. Uh, they popped up and took a selfie in front of Seattle uh, in the Puget Sound. So that was uh, that was pretty alarming. Uh, this the Russians. One thing they do have is quiet subs. Um, I don't know if who's ahead in that area now, but I, I believe at one point Russia was actually ahead of us in uh, quiet technology. But I think the U.S. kind of resurpassed them or something. Uh, Dex, go ahead. I I would just say, in my opinion, I'd be shocked if there wasn't one yeah. on the East Coast at any time. Yeah. Uh, and that that's the freaky part. If they're popped up, if, if somebody is on a boat and got a picture of them popping up, okay, that's – and, and you know, the timing of that with us doing the 12 uh, B2 bomber elephant walk, it would not be a surprise if that was their reaction. Like, okay, so that's creepy though too. Think about it if it popped up. They have – I think they – do they even have to pop up to launch their missiles? Do any of the Navy here know – can they launch it completely underwater or do they have to pop up to the surface to, to release a missile? I'm pretty sure they can do it from underwater, but they can't be too far under. Um, but I don't know exactly how that works. And uh, let's see here. It would be hell, Bazoo. Uh, Leo Seguros, yep, nickel. Uh, let's see here. Maybe the lost Poseidon. Periscope depth. Periscope depth. Okay, so SDS says that you have to be periscope depth, which is pretty shallow. Underwater at Marf. So they could, you could not even see something and then just see a missile. Because I feel like I've seen test videos of just a missile popping out of the water. In the yeah, movies, they're under. No, uh, I don't know if I'm corn pop, but I have not seen submarines. Oh, is there a corn pop here? There might be. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but that's like the best, like, like, uh, endearing insult to somebody like, all right, corn pop. It's like, it's like calling somebody boy, you know, but it's like, come here, boy, but come here, corn pop. I don't know why I, I, 
I kind of like that. I'm, I'm taking that, corn pop. All right. And uh, let's see here. We've got North Korea releases <laughs> releases a song praising leader Kim as friendly father. Uh, by the way, I have not tried this app yet, but everybody keeps uh, posting their AI videos. Uh, Jacob Israel has taken his poetry and actually had this. I don't know which app all of these guys are using, and there might be many. Uh, but it actually sounds like a woman singing. And what's so f it scares me is that some of them you cannot tell it is AI completely. It sounds like a human pop song. And it's actually really good. I mean, especially for something that's generated. Uh, but it is a AI song using your words. And everybody is doing this now. And they're making really funny songs or this songs. But the freaky part is the voices sound human. Uh, Dex, have you heard any of these songs yet? Have you seen some of the ones that Jacob's posted? No, I have not. But now I've got to go watch them. Okay. And then also High Impact Flicks, uh, he also posted one about police. And he wrote a, a song, and it's crazy how he wrote a pretty simple song basically about all the police. But somehow it does like auto-tune. It does everything on its own. The reason why this gets me is that music in the future is that you're not going to know who's real and who's not. I mean, with everything. It's just where is humanity going? Is evolution devolving? Because we're going to do less. If we have AI do more of the things, including creative and artistic things, and just have it do it, then what makes us human? Like, what's going to be left of human? Or in the future, is human art going to be more valuable because, oh, you mean a, a person did this? Or are we, are we, are, is our art going to be at flea markets and like, you're saying a human did this? No, come on, a human? I don't know, but... I wonder if anybody's taken the song, uh, the Friendly Father song, and turned it into AI. North Korea has released a new song praising leader Kim Jong-un for being friendly father and a great leader in a move that appears to be part of a propaganda drive to enhance his standing in the reclusive state. The music video for the song was aired on a state-controlled Korean uh, central television on Wednesday. It features North Koreans of different backgrounds, ranging from children to troops and medical staff, exuberantly belting out lines such as, Let's sing Kim Jong-un, the great leader. Let's brag about Kim Jong-un, a friendly father. And I'm really hoping that it rhymes a little better in Korean, but... A live performance of the song accompanied by an orchestra and watched by Kim was also broadcast on state television as part of a ceremony to mark the completion of building 10,000 new homes. In other news, those homes, uh, the big bad wolf blew them down because uh, they were made out of cardboard. Uh, Kim family dynasty that has ruled North Korea since founding after World War II have sought to strengthen their grip on power by building cults of personality around them. Uh, Dex, what did, uh, what do you think about the upbeat song titled "Friendly Father"? With the orchestral uh, composition, sounds glorious. I just wonder, like, when Kim gets back to his pad, does he like crank on the, you know, the Western music? Is he like jamming out to some, you know, rap or rock or something? And the rest of the world is having to conform, or the rest of his little world is having to conform to his ideals. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, and then, of course, uh, Lord Malfa says he raps, yeah, on, uh, what is it, rap battles? I don't know, but they're getting kind of nuts. And then uh, Argentina asked to join NATO as President Malay seeks more prominent role for his nation. So we already know it was like a, it's a super red line for Russia for any of the countries to join NATO. They didn't want one more. They didn't want Ukraine to join NATO. And then Sweden and Finland joined. Now Argentina's trying to join. And there's talk of uh, two other countries uh, that there might be, you know, popping in the mix. Uh, but real quick, before we get into this, I do want to remind you guys, if you haven't already, go check out Jace. Uh, a lot of you have asked us in the past uh, as far as how do you get backup medications and antibiotics. Uh, if you haven't seen Jace Medical, it's a very simple and very, very efficient service. 
Uh, you get a board certified doctor, you do a telehealth appointment, and you can either get yourself a Jace case, which already has uh, emergency antibiotics in it, or you can get, and this is the most important part, if you have a medication that is incredibly important, uh, they do Jace daily, and that Jace daily uh, allows you, depending on what medication it is, to get upwards of a year of extra supply. That means that you can rotate that in as you get your regular uh, supply, and you'll always have a year supply of medicine. It's really, really crucial as far as if the lights go out or if things happen. Uh, we actually picked this up when 30,000 pharmacies across the country went down, and it wasn't us. It was Fugle Fam members that were literally freaking out. For a week, some of the pharmacies would not fill their prescriptions, and some of them were really, really caught up about that. So uh, Jace is something that I have used. I used at least twice during CV for certain things. Uh, and it's a very easy service. So go over to marfuglenews.com slash Jace. Make sure to go over there to learn more. Uh, again, you can find out everything there. And make sure to use the code MARF because you'll not only save, but you'll help us as well. So Argentina joining is is a... Well, they're not joining, but they're asking to join. And it's kind of left field. Uh, they formally requested on Thursday to join NATO as a global partner, a status that would clear the way for greater political and security cooperation at a time when the right-wing government of President Javier Malay aims to boost ties with Western powers and attract investment. The request came as NATO's Deputy General Secretary, Mircea Giona, uh, hold, held talks in Brussels on regional security challenges with visiting Argentine Defense Minister Luis Petri. They welcomed uh, Argentina's bid to become an accredited partner in the alliance, a valued role short of, quote, ally for nations that are not in NATO's geographical area and not required to take part in collective military actions. NATO membership is currently limited to countries of Europe, Turkey, Canada, and the United States. The designation would allow Argentina access to advanced technology, security systems, and training not previously available to it. Here, here's one thing I think of, and if if you uh, let's if when you look at the map, it's like so. First of all, this is kind of odd them even asking, but maybe it's not right. Maybe Argentina is worried about things going off in their own neck of the woods, and they're picking sides. Everybody is, is kind of picking the table they're going to sit at for World War III. Uh, Dex, d didn't you think the same thing? Like, Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's alignment. Everything is getting aligned. You're either on, on the BRICS side or you're on the NATO side, the West side, however you want to phrase it. Like, there's, there's this clear division that seems to be happening. There's a few players that are sort of like waffling in there, like Turkey and India. They play both sides, but yeah, you're everybody's sort of trying to line up on what, what side do they want to be behind and whose, whose front do they want to, uh, whose favor do they want to get and, and gain? So, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're way, they're down in South America. They're nowhere near, you know, uh, Europe or, or even North America. So, um, yeah, they, they can't be an official, as it says, ally, but they certainly can be a partner, and that's what they, they allow. Yeah, and it, makes you, it just makes you wonder, you know, what, if they're just doing it because they want to get, um, you know, more money into their country or if something else is popping off. And then war maps reveal how China, uh, how Russia could attack NATO. So yet another, it says Ukrainian battlefield defeat will further imperil NATO's eastern flank with Russia, according to a strategic map published by the Institute Study of War. The ISW, we've talked about many times, they have put out all sorts of little nuggets. I don't, and I, I actually, I, it was about a month ago, I wanted to look deeply into who they are, because some of the things that they've put out, it's like if, if what they say or what they think through their studies are true, it's pretty scary, but are they biased? You know, how much, how, how, I think we looked up, Dex, didn't we look up who, who funds the ISW? Isn't it, isn't there something weird there or something? Because it, it continues to put out stuff that's, I don't know if it's Gando or not, but, or if Well, all of these, all of these groups are kind of weird too, when you think about it. They study war and they study, and they're, they're funded by different organizations, so yeah. 
That's what I'm saying. I, I, I wonder if, if you guys, as a community, if anybody wants to do a deep dive, uh, let us know or publish a video on it and we'll show it. Russian advances will ex uh, accelerate absent urgent American action. It says the Russians are pressing their advantage and advancing slowly but steadily on several sectors of the front. Since the beginning of this year, Russian forces have seized over 360 square kilometers or about 138 square miles, the area the, deci uh, the size of Detroit. Which actually, it doesn't sound that big, but uh, it, it makes you think, like, how how fast or how slow are they going? Kagan warned that a defeated Ukraine, whether controlled directly by Russia, a collaboration of government of some si uh, some kind, or otherwise, uh, otherwise in a state of enforced neutrality or demilitarizations, would put pressure on NATO's eastern flank, particularly the Baltic states and southeastern Europe. The underlying scenario assumes that the Russian will prioritize uh, cutting the Sawalki corridor that runs between the northwestern uh, Belarus around Grodno. So they're, they're uh, again, speculating what this would be. So this is the slider map. So check this out. Uh, this would be this would be the plan. Now, I, I this is kind of they they're not good at um, they're not good at um, what do you call it at? attractive design here because this is kind of ugly uh dex you found a couple interesting nuggets in this yeah the little white box on the bottom left gives you a good description of the differences when you slide this you guys can play with the slider too if you going to look at it but basically it's showing like look if if ukr falls uh slide all the way to the right and you'll see you know nato forces will be fixed to cover the occupied ukr you've got moldova pretty much ready to be crushed and then everything all the pressure then falls onto romania and then of course at that point you've got the bridge between kaliningrad belarus which then cuts off estonia latvia and lithuania but then if you go back the other way if ukr wins then you've got the nice stronghold of nato uh holding that big chunk and holding them back um if, if you think of it that way or the way they're describing it which then only puts the pressure at the top um, and only up in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. So then you can move forces from the south, from Romania, from Poland, up to the north to then have to deal with just the north as opposed to having to deal with all of it. So it, it, it reminds me of the game of Risk. So they're essentially doing Risk with real-life scenarios, they're, or they're, they're plotting out a Risk map. So... But as far as the and the German leaked plan of of Russia taking on NATO, how many of you think that Russia wants to take on NATO? What is the general opinion of everybody here? Uh, and you can do a third option, but press one if you think that Russia wants to take on NATO after they defeat Ukraine, or they, if assuming they take on uh, and take over Ukraine. Two, if you think that they don't want anything to do with it and they're not trying to take over nato and then three you can put other and we'll pop it up on screen how many of you think uh one they are trying to take nato two they are not trying to take nato and three other i assume that there would be a lot of twos so it, there's a it's kind of a, a broken torn up uh community as far as there's a lot of folks, and this is crazy right now, people distrust our own media so bad, uh, so much that most people are more uh, believing what uh, Russia is saying because, unfortunately, our media has been lying to us so rigidly, it's insane. Uh, somebody says, but I'm starting to think so. D.W. David's way just needs to be needs to cause trouble there russia is taking out the labs yeah see i i i know there's a lot of shady stuff there three nato is just a money sucking op jammer one uh you can you can have multiple answers too it, it can be all of the above right <laughs> as far as like money sucking up this op that op this op it's probably all of the above um, I'm I'm s not surprised that people aren't supporting it anymore after I don't know the third or fourth story of 
uh, Ukrainian staff member having a million dollar mansion and and f- super cars in their garage and then resigning peacefully. It's like, wh- why didn't those guys go to prison? Nine people resigned right under Zelensky. Are they in prison? Like, they took millions of dollars. That's our millions of dollars. They should be extradited to the United States. They should have been put on trial in front of the entire United States. Do you agree or disagree? I think so. It's pretty messed up. And then Dex, uh, Pentagon prepares to send artillery air defenses to Ukraine as House approaches vote. Well, here we go. They're getting ready. Uh, The tranche, which would be only the second the U.S. has sent since running out of funds in December as Congress stalled uh, the request for the additional aid, will include artillery and air defenses to replenish the UKR arsenal, the official said. Um, the White House has approved one emergency package of $300 million last month using cost savings from previous contracts. I guess they can just, you know, they, they have a hard time accounting for stuff in the DOD. So apparently they can just make numbers up and find money when they need it. Um, we know that they just can't get a budget together. That's been long reported now for many years. But anyway, I digress. So many U.S. weapons are already positioned in stores across Europe that could be pulled immediately. Um, so... I think they're just trying to get stuff ready as quickly as possible. As of course, as we've reported, they're trying to vote on a new bill or a new funding package, which I want to say it says here 48 billion, um, 95 billion is the total amount. 61 billion, sorry, would go to UKR. 48 would go uh, to the Pentagon to finance arming uh, Kiev. So yeah, it's a lot of money for UKR if that goes through. Now I, I just checked up on if I could find anything more regarding that that uh, that submarine. One thing I thought was interesting, and this is something we covered back when it happened, is British nuke subs missile misfired off of Florida again. And the the point is that was the second time that had happened, and it, you, it makes you wonder. And I, I this is just something that popped in my head. What if it wasn't a misfire? Or what if there are events like that that have happened that they call the red phone and they say, hey, we got to dial this back. Uh, the, the, the nuclear submarine that caught fire, the uh, top secret one, the Losherik, back in 2017, that still doesn't have an answer that any of us believe. It's like, you know, it's very likely that we have, and I, I almost guarantee, I, I guarantee that we have had interactions between Russia or China or any of these things where our military had some sort of exchange, at least with one of them, right? We've probably gotten in a super close exchange. I I shouldn't say probably. I know that this has happened, but then they cover it up and they call each other and they say, hey, we got to dial this back or it was a mistake or that. And we won't find out until decades later when it comes out, you know, through freedom of information requests or something. If those still exist in the future, by the way, I, th- I thought I just thought I saw something about them trying to change things so that it would be harder to do or try to get rid of those. But and then if they change the constitution completely, then who knows? We might not even have one. Or if we start uh, having to follow somebody else's constitution at some point. Speaking of which, China orders Apple to remove WhatsApp, Threads, and other apps. Uh, in a censorship moves. Uh, This also includes Telegram and Signal. There's other apps that were actually included in this. And it's it's just, it's more that, you know, they, they, uh, like their TikTok, which they allow here, but will not allow there. Uh, This also, this is what I thought. The first thing I thought is they are cutting all communications, all these background encrypted communications. They're cutting it out right now. The timing of this is kind of uh, unnerving. So think about this. If they are trying to cut out any kind of way to secretly communicate from China to other countries, that's pretty creepy. Apple has removed popular messaging apps like WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal from its iPhone app store in China after the Chinese government ordered the company to do so, the Wall Street Journal reported on Friday. It says we are obligated to follow the laws in countries where we operate, even when we disagree. Same thing with X or Twitter or any of this. They have to follow the regional laws of that country. 
they straight up passed a law saying that this is illegal there. I it, For those people, there was people that were arguing in my comments saying, oh, it's great to live in China. You They pass laws like this and you think it's great to be there? Like, you can't use certain things you can't do i i think that's that you got to be brainwashed if you think that it's great uh to to have these kind of draconian measures done uh dex go ahead and we just passed one to try to get rid of tiktok so are we any better well and by the way what is where is that at right now i is i, I thought it was going to the senate and i thought it might have moved faster in the senate but it i don't think it has i haven't heard anything since the it passed the house house to the senate after the senate was going to the president but that i haven't heard that part see people don't use tiktok to communicate though i guess they can put out a one-way video and maybe comment it, on it back but uh people are using telegram whatsapp these are communication apps they have also cut all of the video game chat, so people can't chat online with other people outside the country. And part of the thing we covered is people were secretly getting information out of China, out of certain places in China, through Xbox games and PlayStation games. They were on Call of Duty talking in code and actually getting information out that way. And then they did this whole big kind of ring around, and then they now they're trying to cut. I, I think they already cut. Uh, voice communication outside the country on those kind of games. They've also limited video games, all sorts of other things. But as far as this go, you know what makes me nervous? They've also removed all of the flight tracking uh, hardware, all of like the f uh, flight radar stuff from their uh, from their country, and I'm I, I think it's all of it. Like they will not let it anybody track their flights and planes in their country. So it's like, what are they hiding? Are they moving stuff around? They don't want people communicating through these encrypted apps. And if you communicate openly, they know what's being uh, communicated and you'll get in trouble. And if somebody in China communicates, hey, they're moving around military stuff, then you'll go to jail in China and that's not going to be fun. Uh, they, they track and monitor their people even worse than we do. So think about that. If they're using VPNs and these apps, which they can't even use the apps anymore. So even if they have a VPN, I guess there's probably ways to do it. Uh, Dex, wouldn't they still be able to do this? Um, do you think this is just a financial jab, or do you think that there's anything to what to uh, what I was saying? Well, I think this is the easiest way for non-technical people uh, to communicate. So if they shut these down, uh, you're absolutely right. You're cutting down secure communications that are very hard to detect and decrypt, especially peer-to-peer -peer encryption. So when you cut that out, yes. Now, are there other ways? Yeah, there's other ways. But the common person or the non-techie isn't going to be able to do that easily. They'll have to follow lots of steps and instructions and could get it wrong and might even give themselves away in the process. Yeah, they said because both contain, and this is why, because both contain political content that includes problematic mentions of the Chinese president. Even this show would be a problematic mention. Like anything that I have said, that's why we get these comments. And I get people that l say they live there, that they're American citizens that live there, and it's just so great. But at the same time, I've heard from people that are American citizens that have lived over there or lived there during CV. The one, uh, well, and an Australian civilian, she was a streamer. She she had to have a, a like a GoFundMe put together to get her out of there during CV, and it was a it was an absolute nightmare. I remember her streaming, and during CV they were like lining people up on a wall that like so scary. Uh, when in the thick of it, and they they all had those suits on, those you know full on has suits, and I was thinking, gosh, I hope she gets out of there. She ended up getting out of there, um, but like other people have said that. You know that people have followed them. Heck, if you look at Sir Pensed A, that channel, he goes through like how uh, he got followed and people. You know, he had basically private investigators following him around and things. And I, I almost think like if somebody like that really does believe themselves that it's a great place, is is their experience being tailored so that that person does say that, right? I just I wonder if stuff like that happens too, but I don't know. I, again, I don't know. And then Air Force confirms first successful AI dogfight. 
this is straight out of Top Gun. You remember the, they were talking about it like, well, soon there won't be flying, you know, there won't be aces like you, uh, Mr. Tom Cruise. There, there's going to be AI uh, jets. Well, I thought we already covered this, Dex, and it's kind of crazy, but this is the first successful one. So they did try this before, remember? They tried doing an AI dogfight. Or was that an AI dogfight versus human? And now this is AI versus AI? I think this is an up. This is putting the AI in an. an uh, I think they did it in a simulator before, and this is the time they're doing it in a real plane. I don't remember what plane they were using this time. I think last time was an F sixteen, um, but the interesting thing is it's been an F twenty twos for a long time. But anyway, well, uh, well, 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 let's just go with what they're telling us because they're saying it's the first successful AI dogfight. Raw, raw, raw. And it does say it's AI versus human dogfight was carried out as part of the ACE program. That isn't that that's kind of insulting. The Air Combat Evolution program. They're literally calling it ACE. Remember, they they even said like, oh, in the future there won't be aces like you. That will be the ACE. It will be an AI program. And th this is the crazier part. If we imagine like a movie like um uh uh how it ends in that beginning scene where the the f-22s or the raptors or whatever they were flew by the window it's like in the future those are going to just be robots i mean that's going to be an ai driven uh unmanned jet and then you've got unmanned jets versus unmanned jets i mean it, 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 you know are, are less people going to perish or are more people going to perish they'll be able to do things without ever a thought of loss of human life well, loss of human life on their own side. The loss of human life on the other side, mind you. Do, I mean, how many times in history, how many history stories do we have from the previous two world wars where it was like they ended up going on a mission even though they knew that they probably wouldn't come back? There were lots of, you know what, missions, um, take themselves out of this world missions where they only had enough gas or fuel to fly one way. Um, as far as this goes... Think about the next world war in the terms of, of these kind of missions. Missions that would not be able to be done before would now be done with no thought at all. They're not sending humans piloting it. They're sending AI and they can send them anywhere and everywhere with no risk, zero risk to life. It's a Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Uh, Need Elaine, thank you again. Thank you for the super. Thank you over on D Live. I appreciate that. Thank you. Life is better on stilts. Super nice to have you. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Aunt B, no apologies needed. Hey, what's going on? Vicky K, Poco Loco, uh, the approaching storms. Kimria, thank you so much. And Chance, thank you for holding it down over there. And uh, St Starin and Stell, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And then. Uh, can this guy so okay so if you were under a rock for the last 24 hours there was a gentleman who they literally dub this right a theorist 37 who had set himself ablaze outside the the t-man trial and he wrote a a, a document essentially now how many have you have read the document he put out uh, press one if you've read this in the chat. Two if you have not. How many of you read the whole uh, four? Is it four pages, Dex? I, I, the one I had was four pages, but I don't know if that was actual pages or because it was cut. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. It maybe even be six or eight pages because I think it fold, folded over or something. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it was mine. The my copy was cut. It was in chunks. Um, if you read that, it's talking about a new world it's talking about all this stuff it seems super super directed and i'm like thinking what is the point of this what is is he trying to get that message out to the masses and the only person that was affected was him right um if you see the videos from up above it is i that was something i didn't want to see i didn't i but here's another thing CNN was right there. If you have not seen the video of the woman reacting it and going, 
You know, oh, now he's doing this, and now he's doing that, and now he's here, and now they're grabbing extinguishers. Now I can smell it. She's literally doing like a sports play-by-play. If you've seen that, tell me, was that not the weirdest thing? Like, she was excited. I, I thought of the movie, I don't know why, I thought of the movie Eyes Wide Shut. Like, like, like secretly that woman's in a club like that. And this was the most exciting, exhilarating thing she had ever been through. That's what I thought when I saw that that reporter lady. Why was she... I get it. And because other people would be like, oh, she was doing her job. If you haven't seen the video, you don't know what I'm talking about, we'll attach it. It is absolutely the weirdest thing I've seen in my life. The way she's calling out. And now there's a gentleman. It's like she's in... It's 1920 and she's a radio reporter. She was reporting every little thing. There is a slight wind going five miles northeast to west. And and I can see that the man is right behind the thing and he's handing this to that. And now somebody is high-fiving behind. It's, it, it was just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And they were right there. And then afterwards, she says, it's, well, you know, it's a historic moment and this and that. And her, uh, they asked her because then she became the story because she was right there reporting it. I just think it's super convenient, right? And now they're labeling him this because of the views in that paper. What is what is the end goal here? If this was something really creepy and, you know, some sort of crazy thing, what the heck was going on here? Well, are they is this going to be used to restrict things? Is this going to be used right before it, it just seems like, what, are they going to say, well, we need to stop this or that, or we need to control the flow of information because things like this happen? Like, what is the end goal? I hope I'm communicating that well. The man reportedly threw brochures out before this happened, and the, the brochures had that uh, me- that message in it. And it didn't seem like it had much to do with, I mean, it, 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 you know, it was just like, what the heck is this? Uh, Dex, this whole thing, the uh, you, I showed you the video right before the show. I, 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 you didn't see that until I saw it too. That was disturbing. Do you know? Uh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole thing is extremely disturbing in many different ways. I, you know, for those of you, if if it's not something that you want to know about, you know, sure, don't pay attention. If it is something you want to know about. You might want to not necessarily not saying go watch a, a video or anything like that, but there is a lot of other information that goes on with this story that's kind of interesting, like what he was trying to say, um, his actions before and after, some of the different things he had done on social, and all of that is being plastered all over social media right now. So it won't be hard to find. It seems to be the talk of the town, so to speak, at the moment. And I did see an update that uh, he has uh, passed away at this point. I, I and I knew it. I, if you see the the secondary video from the rooftop and he, it, the the ex, the stuff that was he put on himself after they thought he was out, he then re, up and then they put him out again and he then again it happened. Um, a couple one person, uh, Loomer shared a picture of him uh, apparently or allegedly it was him on the bed there. Uh, it was bad. Even if somebody like that survives, it's never the same. It's 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 a horrific uh, way to live. Now, as far as um, he was, he was even trying to pat himself out at one point. It it was bad. It's not something for the faint-hearted. Uh, I would say most of you could get away with never ever seeing it, especially that rooftop uh, view of things. Somebody was probably a few floors up and and had a phone out. But as uh, he was calling right before the last post before this was him calling for a certain event to happen that everybody needed to get up and, you know, do a certain thing that happened way back when. Right. Uh, same with France, the, that kind of thing, like the revolution. It was uh, it's very, very spooky, to say the least. So, yeah. Um, reminder, make sure to go check out energy. If you are looking for a generator, I would highly recommend if you're going to go solar, go with a flex tactical. This is the same generator that the U S army has picked under the STTR phase two contract. It is modular. It's expandable like Legos. You can add as many batteries as you want up to 96. 
So again, that would be super overkill. Uh, or you can take it with just one and use it as a portable generator uh, anywhere. You can bring power with you out into the middle of the wilderness. It has built-in heaters into every battery for extreme colds. Uh, it has a steel reinforced frame. It has 1500 pound latch system. I love how they show it on the back of a truck because I've said since the beginning, this thing could fall off a back of truck. Uh, that is how tough it is. Uh, so they did make it tough enough to where it could be, you know, obviously uh, purchased by the army. So uh, the only downside, only downside is the weight. Uh, the weight is, uh, it, it can range from a few months to six months. So get your name on one early and it is definitely worth it. As far as a generator, you want something that's going to work every time. And that's the only thing that the military cares about too, is, is it reliable? Is it going to turn on every time? Rather than getting one that will come to you on Monday that's built by a company that's straight up a front. And you, you can put as many uh, patriotic words in the names as possible. Uh, but when you look at the actual companies, they're a front for somebody much Eastern. So again, go check it out, marfuglenews.com slash energy, I-N-E-R-G-Y. So yeah, there's there's a lot of scary stuff in the world. We all have to keep faith and we all have to really support each other. We all have to make sure that we're looking out for our friends, our family, our circle close to us, and then try to grow that circle. Try to get to know the people around you if you can, uh, but make sure you do it in a smart and responsible way. That's the thing. If we could all get our, our kind of groups together uh, worldwide, because I know there's people outside the U.S., we would be in a lot better uh, place. It's uh, it's much better to have strength in numbers. Um, so, Dex, thank you so much for your service today. Yeah, much love. Great job, brother. Thank you, Brando, for subscribing. And if you would like to watch the short we did over on Marfugal News, uh, make sure to click here. It is now time for the shout It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout -tro. I